Star Wars Episode 9 be the longest Star Wars movie ever? We're going to find out what we think in just a little bit <laughs> and a lot more. Welcome back to the Resistance Broadcast. My name's John Hoey. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are glad that you are a part of the Resistance and hanging out with us. We are a little short-staffed here in the crew once again as Lacey Gillerin is still recovering from her extensive stay at San Diego Comic-Con, but she will be back with us on Monday. So for now, it's just me and this guy. You know him. He is known as Myra Trunks, also known as James Bainey. What's going on, man? Why have you never had Chipotle? We're getting into this. Um, I've, it's just, it's like one of those things where, you know, there's like a great There's movie. no excuses, John. I just wanted everybody to know that John has never had or has ever really felt the need to go try Chipotle. And that's, not, that's a lie. He, he just, just made that part up. That, that's not. Like, you're like, oh, I, I went one time and they were closed down. So that was about the extent of the effort I ever yeah, put into that. Yeah, because of E. coli. Yeah, but that's like a, a random event. That's like saying, because of construction. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but construction can't destroy your gastrointestinal system. Yeah, but that... Okay, look, the, the point is is that one time you went and there was a circumstance where you couldn't go, it's whatever, but it's like, after that, you're like, there's no pressing issue to go to this place, and I feel like most of our hmm. listeners are going to be like, that's weird. He's never been to Chipotle before? I don't know. We could put up a poll about it, but I just think... I well, just also, think I'm now, speaking no, if for you're the fans jab, here. No, no, hang on now. If you're going to jab at me, <laughs> I need to poke fun at you that you're saying that is your favorite restaurant in on the planet. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. I, I, I have nothing else to say. No, That's I'm it. I'm absolutely proud of that. I I think that <laughs> it is it is a food that that very. I don't know. I, I come across some people that are like, oh, I don't like it. But it's always surprising to most people. They're like, what? You don't like it? Because it's like a it's like a surprisingly great food like that everybody kind of comes together on. Like, did you like Dash Jedi? No. Oh, well, I loved it. And we're going to argue. But then we're going to argue at Chipotle, right? Because Chipotle is amazing, right? All right, let's go both go to Chipotle. <laughs> Like, that's I get, it's I get so good. Snoke like sending people to Chipotle to get him food, and that's all he eats is Chipotle because that's all he knows and all he likes, and he doesn't care about anything else. Yeah. So you're, what you're saying is I'm Snoke. You're Snoke. I have been revealed to Snoke, and I just want to be clear too that when I say we're talking about how it was my favorite food ever, I have on many occasions said that if I were ever on death row, hands down, no doubt about it. Uh, Chipotle would be my final meal. That's what I would ask for. Well, James, let me ask you this. Will I ever eat Chipotle? You will. Now that okay. I know it, whenever I'm with you, we're going to Chipotle. Like, <laughs> um, Yeah, it's fine with me. I just have to test their E. coli. And then we'll, we'll be good to go. See? Um, See, you don't but James, I think no. the, dude, there's way more important things we have to find the will about, yes, right? Yeah. So let's, they're tired about hearing about burritos. Let's talk about some Star Wars. I fear nothing for all this as the Force wills it. Yeah, so the will of the Force this week is one, two, three, four, five, six questions, just like last week, actually. Six questions that we're going to be asking will or will not. I don't know, that's a weird way to say it. Will, will they or won't will they? Will they or won't they? Yeah, or will they or will they not? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So the first question this week comes from us. It's Will episode <laughs> <laughs> Will episode 9 be the longest Star Wars movie ever? John, what do you think? I think it will. I, I think um I think it won't. I think it, it will, will not because I think it will because there's so much to wrap up in my opinion. Um I think I think we're looking at a two hour and forty minute movie. 
Wow. I don't know, man. That's that's long. And that the thing is, is like the reason I kind of think that is I I love The Last Jedi, but I will say I think they're like looking back on it, even probably the creators are like, yeah, maybe we could have pulled back on this and this and this. I mean, maybe I mean maybe not Ryan Johnson, but I think JJ and Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iger would be like, let's let's try to keep this thing at a solid two ten. You know, or something mm-hmm. like that. So mm-hmm. I, I just have a feeling, I, I know what you're saying, but I, I think that sometimes when you watch Less Dead Eye, it's a, it kind of feels a little long sometimes. Kind of just a it's going to be a two hour and 40 minute sprint though. It's going to be so yeah. awesome. Yeah, I could hear you. All right, let's move on to the second question though. Already divided. So we're already over, we're already over one. So yeah. we're not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and is th- this question is from at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N, right? Yeah, they sent that in and... Uh, <laughs> And by the way, thanks for sending in all of the questions, nobody. So, uh, will Snoke appear in John Favreau's post Return of the Jedi live action series? John, no. This one's tough for me. Um, I'm also going to say no because I oh, think, yeah, I think that I don't know, man. I think it's I don't, too high profile. Is that yeah? Too Dude, we're gonna get a Snoke of a character. Book. We're gonna get a Snoke book, and I, I, I mean, I'm not saying Andy Circus is an A-lister, but I can't see him doing all this Snoke stuff, going back and doing it on a TV series, and I can't imagine them having anyone else do it. Yeah, um, and I think I think you're getting a Joseph Snoke novel to to get people that backstory they want. Yeah, I think. Uh... I think that um, they pushed that the Snoke visual effects were like cutting edge and they were like just the pushing the boundaries of what visual graphics can do. And I don't know. I mean, not that, you know, spared no expense on the TV show, but at the same time, I think like there's got to be ways to keep down the budget on the, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, for what they're trying to do. And so I just think like bringing an Andy Circus to recreate one of the most visually technologically advanced visual things. Outstanding. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. It just seems kind of crazy. But then again, I mean, you know, they could do like, oh, there he is. He's in a vision and he's in the fog and, you know, we see him. He makes appearances. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Unless, I- unless Favreau Tarantino's it and just does like one scene, it's like animated. I yeah, it goes back to, I just I um, don't know. I have a feeling that his stuff isn't really going to revolve around like we know the era, but I don't think it's going to involve like Ben mm-hmm. and stuff. So anyway, we need we're, it's will or won't. <laughs> right. And and we're both saying he won't. He won't. Uh, third question is, will the Clone Wars new episodes be the best of the series? Now, this kind of comes off the cuff of what we were talking about last Monday. People really like those Mortis episodes, John. So will mm. these next 12 episodes be the best of the Clone Wars series? I was going to say yes earlier, but after thinking about it more and listening to our episode on Monday and looking looking back on it, no. No. I think they'll be I think they'll be good and I think your diehards who love the Clone Wars will overstate how good they are because they've missed it so much. But I think ultimately, when we step back in a few years and look back, they're going to say, eh, they were good. I'm glad glad they did them. But uh, there are no Mortis Arc, or there are no Maul Trilogy, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm going to say no. Um, you drive a hard bargain on that, but I, I still think I'm going to go with they are. And I think... Ooh. I, yeah, I think they are going to be the best. And the reason is, is I think because they've had a lot of time to plan out how these 12 episodes are going to go. That's going to put the final nail in the coffin on this series. Um, and so I It'll think have better animation too, I'm sure maybe, but they might also just like kind of keep to the same style that they've ever. So that way it fits in um, using old assets that might even be like part of the budget thing. Um, but I, th- I think they're going to, um, they're going to close this thing the right way. And mm-hmm. it's going to be very impactful and uh, super emotional, I think. So we'll see how we'll see it turns they, out. They will be the best ever. Yep. The be- mm-hmm. best of the series of Clone Wars. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. 
Um, will episode nine be the last time J.J. Abrams is involved in a Star Wars production? I'm going to jump jump on you here, and I'm going to say, yeah, I think it is. I think he's uh, he's putting his bow on this one, and he's going to hand it off. And I think that's funny because we said that about Force Awakens, but I don't think how much more closure you can get after after nine, unless it's amazing, like so excellently amazing that we're like, take it from Ryan, give it to JJ. <laughs> I don't know. I'm with you, man. I am saying um, it will be the last time. So yes, it will be the last time JJ is involved in a Star Wars production. And I think it's going to be incredible. And I think he's going to go out on a high note. Can't argue with you. I think that's exactly what it is. Um, we got remember another, that now. Yeah, remember that you can't ar- can't argue with me. I can't argue with that point because oh. um, I already said I agreed with it. The next question: Will Kevin Kiner take over as the main composer for future Star Wars movies? Now, just to give you a little bit of context. Kevin Kiner is the uh, main composer for the Clone Wars series, and he's kind of a fan favorite. As far as like, oh man, this dude's so good. Give him a shot. Put him in the movie. So Rebels too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, he comes from that Dave Filoni, you know, Clone Wars era. So um, do we think that he will take over uh, as a future Star Wars movie composer? What do you say? Um, well, as the main composer, no. I, I feel like they're going to... I think we talked about this where it was kind of like, I thought Ryan Johnson's trilogy will have its own composer. Benioff and Wise will have their own composer. Maybe even the dude, the guy, the, the person who did the Game of Thrones music. But um, I think he may get himself a movie if there's a standalone. Like maybe he does the Obi Wan movie or something. You know, um, it's possible. Um, but will he be the new John Williams and just be like, "Oh, he's the Star Wars composer"? I say no. Um, yeah, I say he's not even going to be in a movie. Just series. Yeah, I think he's just going to, that, that's that's the niche. And, you know, it, I, I'm not 100% positive that uh, Dave Filoni's ever going to get a movie either. And if they're not moving mm-hmm. Dave up, then they're probably not moving up the dude who does the music for this. That's a this, good point. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that uh, Kevin would like to stay with Dave as well. So it, mm-hmm. there's kind of a bigger question there too. But And I'm going to say a very unpopular thing is like, I'm not like super blown away by the music. And I think that the music yeah, neither am I. that is in Rogue One and the music that is in uh, Solo are, are so good that, that I, don't, I don't know. There's no need. There's plenty of composers out there who have been doing film scores for a long time to give this guy his shot when he is excelling already in the animated world. You know? My only request is people stop being lazy and suggesting Hans Zimmer. Dude, Hans Zimmer's so good, though. I know. Too he much wrote Lion, He wrote Lion King. That's amazing. I know. That's amazing. <sighs> oh, Hans Zimmer. Next question. Will Maul's story at the end of Solo be continued in a future Star Wars live action series instead of in a movie? That one's kind of a tricky question. It what are you won't. saying, John? It won't. No, so, it will be in a movie somehow. That's Ray interesting. Park is, Ray Park's coming back with a Sam Witwer voice, probably some Amelia Clark, but in a movie, not in a series. And it may not be a solo sequel, but they're going to continue this somehow, some way. Cinematically. I think that that was 100% the plan and then Solo didn't do that well at the box office and so the plan has changed and they're going to finish Maul's story elsewhere. Books, comics, something else. Oh yeah, no. No, your answer is it will. No, it will not be in a future live action series or in a movie. You don't think it neither? Neither, no. I think it's going to... I. I don't see them doing a television series telling the story. So how are they going to do it? 
I, They're going to dump it off in a, in a comic somewhere? I th- Yeah. I think, like, right now, they were hoping that that would be the case. Like, like, this has been a character that the fans have wanted for a very long time. We have this ripe area. People are really going to love this. And then people didn't even go see the movie. And then they're like, oh, Maul, yeah, whatever. That's weird. I thought he was dead. You know? And it's just uh, like, then you, you not have the to... big response they were hoping for. I don't... I know this is a yes or no segment, and we're not supposed to get too deep into this, but... You're gonna have a big population of Star Wars fans who saw him come back, and they're gonna be like, "Oh my God, they're where? Can, where are they gonna go with this?" And then they're gonna think it ended because they're not gonna be reading that comic or something. Yeah, I mean, I you let let's rephrase the question just a little bit. Do you think that you know he's gonna be in a movie or a live action series? I would say definitely more likely live action series. Okay, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, but we got a big discussion coming up here that was posed by one of our listeners. Is that right, John? Yeah, he fired it over to us in Ask the Resistance, and sometimes we've done this before where we're like, that'd be a good discussion. So we bring it over here to Thursday. Yeah. Obi-Wan once thought as you do. So this week's discussion, thanks to a question by Big Dave at Big Dave Pens. He said, what is the best order to watch the saga films? Now, we're going to take this and stretch it into what's the best way to watch all the Star Wars films, because James and I don't want to leave out Solo or Rogue One. Um, And he said, I personally say four, five, this is episodes now, four, five, one, two, three, six, seven, eight, to explain the bombshell in Empire, Vader telling Luke he's his father. What do you guys think? Now, his is sort of a machete order, but he's he's leaving episode one in. But James, let's talk about it. There's there's no wrong answer, but uh, what are some of the options? We know of the machete order, um, which is four, five, two, three, six. And we're not sure about whether seven and eight are after that or not. Yeah. Um, the reason they uh, leave out one, just so you know, is because they, they feel it's pointless. unimportant, unimportant yeah. to the story. So... Um, We know of the Pablo Hidalgo preached and often prescribed to order of release method, which means four, five, six, one, two, three, uh, seven, eight, seven, Rogue One, well, eight, Solo. (laughs) Yeah. And then, of course, there's the numerical method, one through the end. So let's dive in, James. Um, I think I know what you are lean towards. I know what I lean towards. Um, We're not going to get into a battle here, but let's talk about it. What do we think is the way to go? Well, the reason we're not going to get into a battle is just because like at the end of the day, I don't don't really feel like it's that important. I feel like uh, the viewing order is like an interesting topic and that continues to change as they're putting out these new movies, especially since like, um, like we've talked a lot about Marvel and how they seem to seemingly put out movies like one right after the other timeline wise. But like, Star Wars is weird because, like, they're doing, like, well, we'll do, like, you know, in this era and then this era, and then there's going to be these things over here. And it, it's not as clean cut as 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, in which case, if that was if that was the case, I, I mean, I could still understand somebody saying, well, you got to watch 4, 5, 6, and then 1, 2, 3, and then you can start 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, you know. And also, dude... They're, we're going to have to put a cap on this at some point when we start really branching out with Benioff and Wise and Ryan Johnson that have nothing to do with these movies. So you have to yeah. stay within this story area. Yeah. And it yeah. and it gets weird, too, because, like, we're not doing this, but part of me feels like if if you've never watched Star Wars and you're trying to, like, do this the right way, I, man, like, Clone Wars is something to watch. I really honestly yeah, believe yeah. that if you watch if you watch Attack of the Clones, then watch all of Clone Wars, which is crazy, but you watch the whole series, then you watch Revenge of the and Sith. And the movie? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 we're not including that in this thing. <laughs> um it's 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 fine, it's whatever, but uh, I think uh it's important to stick to like the live action stuff. But uh, I, I seriously do think that if you watch the entirety of Clone Wars and then you went into Revenge of the Sith, you would you wouldn't even see it as like the closure to these these three movies. You would see it as like the the 
the Clone Wars finale that for some reason they made in live action. And it was like a big mm. budget, like Clone Wars finale. I don't know. Just the crazy. You, you tend to lean towards release order. Is that? Are you talking to me or the listeners? I'm talking to you. You're talking to me. Okay. I, I, yeah, kind of. Uh, I'm having a I'm having a problem though, so we're gonna see how this gets flushed out. All right. Um, because I'm thinking, and I don't know how you you're gonna be with your son mm-hmm. if we're gonna introduce him to Star Wars. Um, but I want you know my son when he's old enough to get that Luke Vader reveal and be like, oh my god! <laughs> so that immediately wipes out episodic order to me. So that that puts me that that. For me, that cancels that out. So I start four, five, six, original trilogy. And then I go back one, two, three, because it's like, okay, how did he become this guy? And then it starts getting a little tricky for me because where do I put Rogue One in? Do I then go right to Rogue One after three and say, remember that first one we watched? This one goes into that. So it gets a little dicey for me. Uh, It's not necessarily release order. And then I have seven and eight, which are literally lead right into one another so i can't break those two up and then it's where do i put solo so it's starting to get a little cloudy for me but i know for a fact i'm starting four five six and then hopping to one two three unless i can be convinced otherwise okay a couple of thoughts on on your order is that for me i honestly don't think there's any way possible to preserve that moment for my son and I would say the same for you, but you'll you'll try. I I think that that moment is going to get spoiled, even if I'm trying to keep it from him. He's gonna How? hear that in pop culture, like kids I mean, at what, school. Your son's gonna be on Twitter at five. No, I mean, it, it, like <laughs> I I don't I think. Well, what have I been doing for five years? Like I just avoided watching the movies or or talking about it or or anything around him. To, pre- to pre- try to preserve that moment. Yeah. To, for me personally, <laughs> Star Wars is still just as important in my life, even though I never really watched the movies like for the first time. I only ever remember them just, just I always knew what, what it was. I right. know there was a moment when I watched it for the first time, but I was so young. Even if I was five or six, like I still think those those moments to me, I don't think I'm going to look back and be like, "Oh man, I remember when I was five and my dad showed me Star Wars." But you I know, can- dude, you'd be you'd be surprised, and I, I I don't mean to interrupt, but I think this is important to wedge in here. Is even if you go on YouTube, and while some of these may be garbage, there are people who film people who have, are watching Star Wars for the first time, and they getting their reactions, whether it's kids or, or girlfriends or boyfriends or whatever, who have never seen it before, and getting their reactions when Vader throws that out there. And a lot of them look like genuine reactions. So it is avoidable for people who aren't, as we like to say on our podcast, in the bubble or dialed in, locked into the Matrix, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I can't speak for all of those videos. I imagine there are some that, are, that might be real. But have you ever read the book... Um, how Star Wars conquered the universe. Yeah. Or they had a documentary about it or, or something. Um, well, I'll get to my point. In the book, How Star Wars Conquered the Universe, the author of the book said he wanted to find someone that didn't know anything about Star Wars. And as many times as people always tried to say they didn't know, I don't know anything. I've never seen any of the movies. I don't know anything about Star Wars. They do. Because they can tell you Luke Skywalker. They know Han Solo. Mm-hmm. They know Harrison Ford's in the movie. They know who Darth Vader is. And one of the most common things is they know that... I, I don't even know who these people are, but I know that Luke Skywalker is Darth Vader's son. You know, or vice versa, the father. So I I really do believe... And and he looked and looked and looked and he like paid oh, people that's and he did yeah, auditions. Chris Taylor. He had people... From Mashable. yeah. He had people come in and uh, try to do these things, and, and he could never find anybody. And when he finally did find someone, it was an Indian on a reserve. And he was he figured out that the person didn't know anything about Star Wars because he, he casually mentioned an X-Wing, and he said, I don't know what you're referring to. What is, what is that? 
And uh, then he started asking questions after that. And he found the person that truly, really did not know anything about Star Wars. And, you know, he showed him the movies and stuff. Um, but to me, I just, I think that, I think that some of these things are just so ingrained in American culture that it's, it's not, I dare say it's not, impo- it's not impossible, but it's just highly improbable that we're ever going to really be able to preserve that for the, for our children, that they're going to get that moment. And they're always going to remember that moment. I can barely remember what happened, you know, my moments from like the prequels. I don't even remember. And I was like a teenager when those came out Mm -hmm. and I have a bad memory, but yeah, dude, that I, that guy follows me on Twitter. I I know who Mm -hmm. the author is, Chris Taylor. Um, I never read that book though. Um, I know it's wildly popular, but I mean that uh, you need to take into consideration elements of that though. Just because someone has heard of Star Wars or heard of Darth Vader, they may not necessarily know that Darth Vader is Luke's father or whatever. But they usually also don't care. Yeah. But I don't want to get too deep into that one aspect of it. Um, I do think it also is important to, for me, watch them as they came out too because... You know, you talk about fan service and tying things in, and George Lucas did a lot of that in the prequels. And if you watch the prequels one, two, three first, a lot of that stuff just wouldn't make sense to you. Um, so I well, have a hard time. I have I, I do have a difficult time trying to come to terms with the fact of watching episodes one, two, and three first. Like me personally, and again, it's all opinion based. There's people out there that probably like your method there. Um, that I, I just can't connect to that idea. And yeah, that process. it's hard to call it my method because I, I really, honestly, don't really have a preference for this. But where you're coming from is, I mentioned that I would probably lean somebody towards re- watching it in release order, or um, I'm sorry, uh, chronological order. And the reason I do that is because I had a I had a friend. Um, who had never seen any of the Star Wars movies. And he knew, like I said, he knew some of this stuff anyway. Um, but I told him that if 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 he watched it in release order, then he's just like everybody else. But if you watch it in chronological order, then you have this unique perspective that for the rest of your life, you'll be able to re- remember that like these things got revealed to you in a different way. Because 99% let, let of this. people have seen it one way and you would be like this rare breed that watched it in in for the first time in a different light. And that's why I recommend that to people. It might not even be the best, but it's so unique and so interesting that you would be able to come out of it laughing at the fact of like, why didn't Luke Skywalker recognize Yoda? We know who Yoda is. <laughs> and, and that's yeah. a moment that's supposed to be special in Empire Strikes Back, but you have this interesting look on it like what now where's he going with this you know what i mean because i know or that's yoda how come how come yoda isn't a, a cartoon in this one how come he looks like a physical tangible thing <laughs> i mean yeah i mean you're gonna have to put some of that stuff to the side <laughs> yeah there's like how, obviously James, a lot more cg idea? in this but um what if someone starting star wars if you're leaning original trilogy starts with rogue one Oh, I've said that for a long time. I mean, since Rogue One came out, I think I that was the other point that I was going to make on your order. Is it, you said you is didn't it know where to strong enough. Yeah, I think so. I, the thing with me is like I feel like you mentioned earlier that when you watch Seven, it's hard to try to stick Solo somewhere in between Seven and Eight. And yeah, well, cause only because I feel like seeing Solo after The Force Awakens would make the most sense. But yeah. because The Last Jedi takes off literally right after Seven, it's tough for me to do it. Which is exactly why I think it makes sense to watch Rogue One and then immediately go into because if you're if you're talking about um, getting someone like sucked into this story, not that it's bad to go from A New Hope to Empire Strikes Back, but I'm saying like. As soon as they finish Rogue One, you're going to you're going to be able to say and it picks up uh, right the next movie picks up right after this. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You're going to be able to see like Vader invading that ship. Uh, it's just like that to me. 
And I think it makes the most chronologically. The the only downside of doing that, and to be clear, is when, watching when, three when more saying, movies and being like, "What was what what was the whole deal with like Jin Erso and all that stuff?" You know what I mean, James? James, just so people aren't confused, when you're saying chronologically, you mean in the story order, not when they were released, because people may be confused when you say chronologically, they may think in our time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, when I say chronologically, I do mean in the sense of like, what's the earliest timeline story of Star Wars? So, in, yes, yeah, in A New the Hope, story. Okay. then Attack of the Clones, then... Um, just clarifying, just clarifying. Yeah, then Revenge of the Sith. And then it, it gets weird because like I said, Han Solo fits in there somewhere. I, I think my chronological argument has always been for one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, and what will be nine. That chronological story to me makes makes sense. If you're bringing in Solo, you're bringing in Rogue One, then I start to get a little bit weird with it. I'm like, I think you should watch Rogue One first, then you go into New Hope, then you do, I don't know. I guess you would go Rogue One, four, five, six, one, two, three, then maybe solo, I don't know. And then that would be like a palate cleanser to to open up for seven, eight, nine. Cause I Dude, don't think three leads into seven at all. I think I'm doing I'm doing it, man. I think I'm wedging solo in between seven and eight. Really? That one seems yep. so weird to me. And the only reason why is because I Han Solo dies and then you get the flashback. Yes, but then also you see him experience his dice and all that stuff, and then they get launched right into The Last Jedi. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I'll concede that a little bit. Cause so I'm right now I'm saying... Because you cause, cause, cause don't think of it as like you watch Seven, and now for some reason you're going to watch Solo. You need to think of it as I just watched Solo, and now I'm getting ready to watch The Last Jedi, and it, and those things will connect more. Whereas like seven so doesn't really have any connection to solo. Yeah. So I mean, you watch sort of does. <laughs> yeah. You, so you get your, the force awakens, you see Han die. So his story is finished. You see Chewie sulk about it. He's sad about it. Then what do you do? You go back and find out how these two met. You see how they became buddies. You see how they became friends and you see the young Han and go on in the adventure and become that kind of jaded guy that we, Oh man, that's who, that's why we saw him in episode four. Then you launch into episode eight and Chewie busts down the door and Luke's saying, where's Han? Like, you may feel that a little more. And I, only I can understand that. I don't know that I have a necessarily a better place for Solo. I did that's think the of, thing. Yeah. I don't know if there is. I did think at one point that Solo might be like, uh, hey, I know this is weird. It's not going to get into the lore, but we're going to start with Solo. Like, we're just, <laughs> I'm just going to introduce you to this, like, cowboy and then we're go and then you maybe go into a new hope, you know. You, the only reason why you can't is because then you're you're almost discrediting Luke. Like you, you're putting him be like you're giving Han a head start, and you're like taking Luke out of the driver's seat to being your protagonist. Because then the, they're going to go into a new hope, saying like, "Where is this guy?" I get like, that, but that's the thing. Is like, <laughs> doesn't everybody look at? everybody looks at Luke as the main character. Isn't it interesting to introduce the star Wars trilogy of like, what if this person has a perspective that maybe Han's like a very important character, like to watch solo and that's learn funny, about him but... and then go to into a new hope and be like, this is cool. And all that this, this kid, um, how does Han Solo fit into this? Cause I just like watched that whole movie with him. Oh, here he is. All right. Let's see how he fits into it. Okay. A little bit different character personality here. Seems a little bit more, you know what I mean? Like, and start to kind of see the movie. But from, it's, it's like, it's like 45 minutes or so into a new hope. So you're going to see two and a half hours of Solo and Chewie and they do this Kessel run and they're the heroes and they're going off on this adventure, the job of the hut thing. Then you got 45 minutes of this whiny little farm boy and he meets this old wizard and you're like, where is this guy? Where's Han? Where's Chewie? Then 45 minutes in, you're like, why now? That, and why are they now like the second fiddle? Like what is going? So yeah, I, that's I think my only the, problem with that. I think that. the only way that the, the, this makes sense really, cause you're going to get that no matter what order you watch it in, I think. But, but Seven's the only alone. way that it would make sense to me <laughs> is if they actually did like, 
cuts. Like they cut into the movie and they're like, all right, we're going to show you the first 40 minutes of a new hope. Then we're going to show you this from, you know, no, 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 so no, 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 I know no. that's like super weird, but <laughs> like if they made like a, a 20 hour super cut of star Wars, you well, best believe will. it wasn't, it wouldn't be like in its entirety. Mm hmm. Like they're not going to yeah. show you all right. of a new hope straight through. I, like right. there might be some that they think is that's the best way to do it, but you got to think they're going to be flashing back to the prequel stuff to explain these elements and and things all like right, that. Well, let let let's 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 run down as we as we stand right now our list because I'm looking at this and then I want to hear yours. I'm thinking right now. Start with Rogue One, four, five, six, one, two, three, seven, solo, eight. So it's interesting. You 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 bought into my Rogue One should be the first one theory. I, I kind of did. Um, I'm a little nervous about it because I like the opening to New Hope being it's it's very classic and and deserves that, but it makes too much sense not to go with the Rogue One into four. So yes, I am buying that pitch, that idea. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's funny. Like I know everybody who's listening to this is like, ah, this is just what he's thinking in the moment and it's nothing permanent. But for some reason, my brain is like, I'm too afraid to say anything. Like, it's like, this is my permanent opinion on this. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, frozen in time. Yeah, I know. I guess, I guess my thoughts like right now, I kind of have two, but I really, I do still like the idea that you watch the prequels and you don't know who Sidious is. You don't know necessarily that Senator Palpatine is the bad guy and he's the person pulling the, the he's the Phantom Menace. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. And I think like watching the one, two, three, four, five, six from the perspective of him and watching him like pull all the strings and cause this big thing to happen. And then watching his resolution of being the emperor and how bad it was. I think the only thing that, that the, the, the interesting part of that is being able to watch is is once you get through the prequels one two three then watch solo then watch rogue one then go into four five and six and you get a little bit of a break from like the main story but you still get to see what the empire has done on Corellia, what the empire has done on mimbin and then you also get rogue one stuff so you see what happened like through jetta and what's happening on those planets and then you then after jetta you watch favro <laughs> yeah yeah but after after Rogue One finishes, that's when you get like a little bit more of the closure to this story. Okay, I saw the opening. I now mm -hmm. I took a break. I went and saw Solo and Rogue One. I saw what the rest of the galaxy is deal, dealing with. How does this all end? Four, five, and six. Boom! There they are. And then guess what? There's a sequel. It's called Seven, Eight, and what will be Nine. Mm -hmm. And those stories to me do feel like they're they're important to watch. Like I I don't think we, this has never got brought up that we think set you start with seven. You know what I mean? I feel I feel like start that would be a really weird. Seven? No no no. I'm saying like that would be a weird perspective. We didn't even bring mm -hmm. it up. Like yeah. nobody's saying. First of all, I think you got to start with Last Jedi. Then you go back and watch <laughs> seven. Like it, that you that's start with weird. Last Jedi, and then you hate Star Wars. Yeah, and then you stop. <laughs> yeah, then you move to Japan and realize that these people are are more into Godzilla, and you're like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Um, <laughs> um, no, I wanted to bring it back to what you said because you made a good point about Palpatine, like people not knowing Sidious yeah. is Palpatine, but. but you spend all of Phantom Menace going, oh, I already know, though. I get it. But, but I already don't know. You, I'm just trying get, to think. If you're when is he going to turn evil? Can you kind of tell it's him? I, it's hard to say. because You I definitely think, do by the end, because they panned I mean, to you, him at the before funeral. Before the movie was even out. No, 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 no. I, I don't think you ever... Dude, when they go... Oh, when Yoda goes, as, as Qui-Gon's burning... He goes, always two there are, a master 
and an apprentice. Yeah. And he says, which one was killed? The master or the apprentice? And it pans right to Palpatine's but face. I know. They're but giving it, it to you. I, yeah, we say that though, but this is coming from a perspective of we knew that, that Ian McDermott was going to be playing both characters. No, no, no. It's, it's because he made those movies knowing that everyone saw four, five, six. That's my point is that we but knew that's why before you can't we start even. With one, two, three. That was what I, my point earlier. No, but uh, my point is, is that when he pans it to them, is that like creative foreshadowing? Like, or is it, or is he really just like, like, well, we all know, so I'm just going to make it straight up obvious. Like, and I don't, I don't Both. think it is. I think that <laughs> if you have never seen the original Star Wars, then, <laughs> then it's not as obvious to you when they make that pan because... All right, how about this? Wipe this lake clean. Yeah. We haven't seen Palpatine yet after A New Hope. So you watch four, then one, two, three... Then five, because then he talks to Vader in the little message, and then six, and that's your Palpatine watching order. Like, let's make well, an order actually, for every that character. Actually, preserves the father thing. Oh no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Oh, no, it oh doesn't. so maybe go four, five, one, two, three, six. So the machete order. <laughs> but you're throwing one in there. Yeah, the, we I, should we should we should write out one day write out viewing orders for each main character how it benefits like the best oh, way to watch that character that story. That would be sweet. The, so it's like, like a, how to watch Han's story, how to watch Leia's story, how to watch Vader's story, how to watch Palpatine's story. Like yeah, that'd that, be, that'd that, be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. Um, All right, so we have to do another <laughs> discussion on that when Lacey's back, where we go, come up with our list. How for each character. how to watch DJ's story? <laughs> it's yeah. like Last Jedi. And then read this one shot comic. Yeah, that's it. And that's it. Yeah. Um, the Maz Kanata story arc. Okay, so so to to wrap the whole thing up, I'm <laughs> I'm staying chronological. I'm going okay. Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, Solo, Rogue One, New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and revenge of the skywalkers whatever revenge episode. of the skywalkers i don't know i just Jeez, doesn't dude. whatever awful um, what was yours what was your no, title jedi don't commit revenge i know mine was just, mine was legacy of the skywalkers legacy of the skywalkers yeah it's i don't even remember what mine was but <laughs> i think your yours was super shredder vader well, yeah but it was called like episode oh nine. uh it's something of the dark right um, it's like was fate. it Fear of the Dark? Was it an Iron Maiden song? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like Fate of the Dark or something like that. Or you um, would put Fate in your title. I think actually, late. you know what's funny? I thought someone so I I saw Fate of the Galaxy and I was like, that's a that'd be a great title for Episode Nine. But then someone said there was already a book called that. So, ooh, is it Legacy of the Dark? Is that what I called it? Could be. Yeah. Anyway, this we can is go back. We can go back and listen. Episode nine <laughs> speculation titles. John, what's your order? Official My order on the record never gets changed. The July twenty third, twenty eighteen <laughs> order that I may change down the road after I have Chipotle. Maybe that'll change my entire life. Oh, it will. It will. Yeah. So it's, this it's is the my sour cream. James. This is my pre Chipotle <laughs> order. So like BBY, this is like BC for me. This is before <laughs> Chipotle. <laughs> it's like. Rogue One, A New Hope, Chipotle, <laughs> Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> like, More Chipotle. Yeah. All right. So I'm going, this is John Hoey's um, before Chipotle viewing order. Rogue One, A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, then going back to the prequels, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith. Then we go to The Force Awakens, back to Solo, because I really feel the strength on that Solo uh, Han Solo tie-in with Kylo Ren. And then you take it to Episode 8, where his death is more impactful by seeing a young Han and the dice and all that stuff. So, And then Legacy of the Skywalkers. And then, yeah, Legacy of the Chipotle. Man. And I can't... I don't think in the future we'll ever change... Like take solo out of it. I don't think we'll ever change seven, eight, nine. I can't imagine that either seven, eight, or nine would ever go before 
one, two, three, four, five, or six. Unless JJ does something really bizarre, but I agree. Yeah. I mean, like he did say he was wanting to tie in the whole trilogy and the whole, or the whole, whatever, you know, the whole series. The whole saga. The whole saga. That's the best term. And he Um, also said he's going to take us places we haven't been or something. Now, I don't know if he means that literally, like we're going to Batu and Galaxy's Edge or or what, but. Yeah, but we'll have been to Batu. Not in a movie. Not in a movie. Yeah, not in a In a a book. Although. Spoiler uh, alert. The reason I hesitated there is because I was like, wait, Batu has been referenced in a movie, though. And it kind of was. They mentioned the Black Spires in Solo, which is on Batu. But are we allowed to say that it's in that book? Yeah. What do you mean? Thrawn Alliances. That's... That Batu is in the book Thrawn Alliances? Mm-hmm. That, I mean, it's in the excerpts. That's public. That's not like... Well, not everyone's probably... I'm not saying maybe people haven't read the excerpts, so... That's true. Do you want to get to uh, Resistance Transmissions, or should Yeah, so we... we asked you guys, should we have mentioned Batu? <laughs> and you said no. No. Um, <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. So, resistance transmissions time. We all know that Chewbacca is an emotional dude, especially when things go haywire regarding the Falcon. Um, Now, we said, look at this meltdown from The Empire Strikes Back, and we posted a gif of Chewie in the Falcon cockpit rocking back and forth, screaming, Mm -hmm. um, putting his hands on his head, kind of losing his mind. And we asked you, what is going through Chewie's mind here? And if you want to find the GIF, you can go to our Twitter account at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N. And as always, we pick the most liked and the ones we like the best. And James, we're starting it off with Joseph. It's not Snoke? Joseph Snoke. I don't think it's Joseph Damn. Snoke. But it's at Cap'n Parrot. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean the parrot is the Cap'n? And it's like um, Cap'n Crunch? No, I think it's um, I think it's like how they call like Captain America. They just call him Cap, so it's a Cap and and a parrot. Cap and a parrot. Oh, because like Captain Crunch, it's spelled that way. Mm-hmm. Captain. But well, anyway, um, so what is going through Chewie's mind here? Joseph said, "Quote: I just spent the last three days freezing the fur off my ass fixing this ship on Hoth, and he wrecks everything ten minutes into our first flight." <laughs> 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 I like yeah <laughs> i i always thought that was like a funny scene in uh empire strikes back where he's like no this one goes here that one goes there yeah. like and like <laughs> there's like a you, you know what this is funny too this goes all the way back to like the earliest memory i have of of star wars he's talking to the, the droid on top of the falcon and he goes wait a minute and he talks it and then he turns and he starts talking to luke and that droid rolls away Mm-hmm. I don't know if any if I'm like the only person who's ever noticed that. I'm sure. I mean, obviously not, but that always bothered me. There's <laughs> another thing in Solo. Maybe I'll bring it up sometime that bothers me too. It just drives me nuts. It has to do with the does, droid. It's like a take, but does it bother you more than Leia not hugging Chewie at the end of The Force Awakens? I didn't even notice that. So yes, it did. It I I see it now. Like, I see him walking away, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it is kind of weird that he never really... But, like, to me, I always see Han Solo go, hey, hold on a second, Mr. Droid. I need to tell you something, but I'm going to tell something to my friend first. Yeah. And then he turns to his friend, and the droid rolls away. <laughs> it just <laughs> bugs me. I have me. to watch like, that again now. Does it not I, take commands very well? I don't know. I have to, I'm have going to laugh next time I see that now. Um, that same scene, though, when Chewie's got his goggles, and he's, like, welding. Yeah. And Han was just, like, screwing around. That's and he's like, OG don't lose your temper. goggles. Yeah, yes. And he's like, don't lose your temper. I'll come back and give you a hand. And he's like, Argh! he gets all mad at him. Like, I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, all right, so the next one. Chewie's going crazy in the cockpit. What's going through his mind? And William at Benz underscore Billy uh, said, 3PO, let go of my friggin' hair. <laughs> so he's inferring that maybe his fingers got caught up in his hair. Yeah, or he's too scared that he's like grabbing onto him, like when you're in a haunted, like oh yeah, haunted house, and like your friend's like, my arm's going numb because you're grabbing. Yeah, my, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, next, Eric McGilvray uh, at Eric McGilvray twenty seven. Close, uh, only twenty seven off. That's it. Yeah. 
Um, you gave it a shot, Eric. And Eric said that Chewy was thinking or saying, I forgot to put the bins out before we left. <laughs> I guess he's referring to the garbage bins at the end of the, like putting it to the end of the driveway. <laughs> I like, guess. Like, yeah. Like when you go away on vacation and you're like, ah, oh, I forgot to do that. <laughs> yeah. That's like every week for me. <laughs> yeah. I forget sometimes too. Actually, I, I, I have to put them out tonight. So that's a good reminder. I actually put them out, uh, the day before, because we were, we, I had forgotten the week before. So we were a little backed up and I needed to put them out. And I was like, I'm just going to guarantee that they go out by putting them out a day early. That's so responsibility like right there. All day. All right. Our next one, we have two more. Jordan Delgadillo uh, at Delgadillo Art. And I got to say, Jordan phonetically spelled out his name. So that people pronounce it right. Because I bet people a lot of times say Delgadillo. Yeah. And he said, no, it's the double L Spanish uh, Delgadillo. So thank you, Jordan. Um, and he said that Ch- Chewie's saying, my mother was right about you. <laughs> I'm guessing that's a reference to the uh, the uh, holiday special. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is not canon anymore. So what? That's... Right? Isn't it not canon anymore? The holiday no. special? When are you talking about the holiday special or the uh Ewoks Sindel The like, Star Wars holiday special. That awful, awful holiday holiday special. Yeah, with like Teak and with like, like Lumpy. The old man. And, and there's like a um, witch. B. Ar- B. Arthur. Hmm. I don't think that's canon anymore. I don't think either one of the things we're talking about is canon actually. Yeah. Um, we have one more by James Otron at James Marsh 83. And this one's pretty fitting because he no, said, yeah, y- you know what the best part of this one is, is that he, this was sent, sent in before the announcement. He sent this to us before the announcement. And he said, Chewie saying, I miss the Clone Wars. <laughs> well, well, don't guess worry, what, Chewie. Chewie. You're not the only one that missed the Clone Wars. <laughs> You're getting them back, pal. You're getting them back. Yep. Well, Chewie has a lot more free time now that Han's not uh, there to piss him off. Um, so, but that was it, guys. Those are the resistance transmissions. Thanks so much for sending those in. We have such a good time with those. You guys are the best. And thanks for being a part of the show. So, James, what do you think? Let's close this thing out. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up like a burrito from Chipotle. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Man, that's old school. All right, guys, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Again, you can check our individual segments from our episodes on YouTube now, as well as our news show featuring Lacey, uh, Star Wars Newsnet, and a bunch of other stuff that we're going to have coming your way. So subscribe to that YouTube channel. And again, iTunes and SoundCloud. Leave us reviews. We really appreciate it. Um, You guys can find some of our merch if you're interested in a shirt or other things like that at tpublic.com slash user slash resistance broadcast. Um, You can find that very easily with a Google search too. And you can find 30 or so different designs on there. Uh, It's the only way to currently support our show. So thank you very much. Uh, Head to our website, starwarsnewsnet.com for all of your latest Star Wars news information, editorials, reviews, and more, especially as episode nine starts heating up. Uh, Lacey will be back with us on Monday, but if you want to get in touch with her, you can find her at Lacey Gillerin on Twitter. Again, my name is John Hoey. You can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and writing and editing over at StarWarsNewsNet.com every week. And Mr. James Bainey, the Chipotle King. Where can people find you, pal? I like that title. Uh, at Meyer Trunks, always Twitter and Instagram. And also, uh, you can sometimes find me at home watching Star Wars in this order. Okay, so it's Rogue One, uh, A New Hope. What? I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll you take your order it. sometime, though. I'll do it. Okay, you can It'll take only my take me Chipotle. like 14 <laughs> hours, 16 hours to get through everything. No, more than that. 22 hours. Well, I'll tell you what. You take the weekend, figure it out. And then on Monday, you can come back and tell me what uh, what you thought. No, thank you. Okay. Well, everyone out there, thank you so much for listening. Enjoy your weekends. And as I just mentioned, we'll be right back here on Monday morning 
with another fresh new Chipotle free episode of the Resistance Broadcast. See you later.